From being one of Hollywood's rising stars in the 2000s to a string of very public scandals, things have been incredibly messy for Amanda Bynes for a long time now. Recently, her ex-fiancé has opened up about the star's infamous psychotic break. And he sure has a lot to say. It's safe to say that Amanda Bynes hasn't had the easiest time lately, following what was a pretty public meltdown. According to her ex-fiancé, Paul Michael, the actress has been off her meds for some time now. Because of that, one thing led to another, and it sparked what was probably one of the worst depressive episodes for Bynes. In an exclusive statement to Page Six, Paul didn't exactly come off as a supportive ex. In fact, he even called her whole outburst wild. Imagine that. Obviously, one would think that Michael only said that because he resents Bynes for what she's done. But after they called it quits in July of last year, the pair were actually spotted together as recently as December of 2022. In fact, Paul said that the two are even friends now. So, did the whole thing come out of concern for the actress? I don't know. But one thing's for sure. Given what went down, I don't think Paul should have publicly called her out like that. Because you see, Amanda's struggle with bipolar disorder and substance abuse isn't exactly a secret. She's been pretty vocal about her sobriety over the years. Back in 2018, she opened up about her experience with substance use and how she started using cannabis at the age of 16. Soon after, things sort of went out of control, and she then progressed onto stuff like Molly and Ecstasy. Not only that, but she also admitted to misusing a drug called Adderall, which is typically prescribed to patients with ADHD and ADD. Amanda shared that her Adderall use especially affected her, because while she was on set for the 2011 movie Hall Pass, she couldn't remember her lines, nor did she like her appearance. Ultimately, she left the film because she'd become convinced that she should stop acting. Now, because of her drug use, her behavior in public had become even more erratic than ever, and she ultimately sought help to get her life back. Although it didn't last long, because after a couple of years of sobriety, Amanda was recently seen roaming around the streets of downtown Los Angeles naked when she flagged down a car. An eyewitness told TMZ that the 36-year-old then told the driver of the car that she was coming down from a psychiatric episode, and later called 911. After the police arrived, a mental health expert determined that Bynes needed to be placed on a 5150 hold, and that's where she was taken next. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. What's a 5150 hold, and why was Amanda taken into one? Well, you see, a 5150 hold represents a section of the Welfare and Institutions Code that allows an adult who's experiencing a mental health crisis or is causing danger to themselves or others to be involuntarily detained for a 72-hour psychiatric hospitalization. Since Bynes had been involved in a public act of indecency and was mentally distressed, the police saw it fit to detain her to put her in observation in an approved facility. Which is exactly what happened to Britney Spears, too, during her public breakdown, too. You see, 5150 holds aren't just exclusive to celebrities. While the 5150 name specific to the state of California, every state in the U.S. has its own version of involuntary emergency hold for such patients. Luckily, because of this law, Amanda was able to get due help in time, although it looks like her psychiatric hold has been extended for now. While these emergency holds typically last for 72 hours, Amanda might just be extending her stay considering she was likely living on the streets for days before calling the police. Just days before she'd reached out to the police, Amanda's car was towed in Long Beach on March 15th. After that, she probably spent her days wandering around the streets in a manic state, which is what led up to her eventual hospitalization. While the emergency hold has been extended for a week as of now, Sources close to the star also claim that it can continue for up to 30 days, too. I can't imagine what that must feel like. But I have to say, Amanda's public episode was definitely unexpected, because she was last seen in a TikTok video of a fan on March 17th, who had nothing but sweet things to say about the star. But then again, you never know what's going on behind closed doors, right? I mean, no one really knows what prompted Amanda to stop taking her medication, right? And back when Paul even proposed to Bynes in February of 2020, it seemed like Bynes was getting her life back, you know? 
the Nickelodeon alum was apparently doing very well and was even looking forward to moving in with Michael. But little did anyone know, there was trouble in paradise. After almost two years of being together, the couple had finally called it quits because of some public accusations that Amanda had made against him. Apparently, Michael had not been taking his medications and had even relapsed using cocaine again. Not just that, Bynes also said that her ex had a weird fetish for adult content, particularly one that involved mom and son, which led her to kick him out of the house. Later, she also clarified that the accusations were not false and that she had actually caught him consuming inappropriate adult-rated content. This was also later confirmed by Michael himself, who claimed that while Amanda did try to kick him out, in the end, he left by his own will to get his own place. But the blame game didn't just end there, though. Michael also insisted that the What I Like About You star seemingly lied about everything she'd said about him, and that too, just so she could keep the attention off of her. Her ex also claimed that the only reason she acted this way was also that she wanted to shame him and even went on to say that Bynes had lied and cheated way too many times and had other flings during the entire time they were together. I mean, that's a bold claim to make. Obviously, when you put things into perspective now, the animosity in Paul's claims regarding her recent meltdown now does seem like he's out to get her. Sure, Amanda's also accused him of things, but knowing how vulnerable her position's been in the past, fans think it was unreasonable of him to expose her like that. In fact, Amanda's own family has also banned Michael from having any contact with her too. A source close to the star and her family has revealed that while Amanda's parents are fully helping the doctors to find the cause of Amanda's episode, they've also banned her ex from reaching out to their daughter, since they believe he doesn't have her best interests in mind, and is probably still hurt about whatever Amanda said about him in the past. And hey, I don't blame them. However, Given how the actress's parents have jumped to the rescue, there's still another question looming over everyone's mind. Will Amanda go through another conservatorship if this goes on? The sanest answer to this should be no. I mean, after all, she's 36. And sure, she's been having a rough time lately, but that doesn't mean that she should have to face restrictions like that again. Luckily, their daughter's recent setback hasn't prompted Amanda's parents to even consider this possibility because as far as they're concerned, Bynes has been very cooperative with her treatment, and that it all seems like an isolated incident and hopefully won't be becoming a pattern in the future. With that, that's all for what Amanda Bynes' ex-fiancé had to say about her recent public meltdown.